Hi folks, this is Karim Rao from ITV as well as your channel. Today we will continue our lab, the Matrix Labs, the video number 10. We have been discussing in the previous video the following. We have created and set up a virtual machine uh, to act as an additional domain controller. The operating system on this virtual machine is Windows Server vNext 2025 Preview Edition, which is the latest uh, in development of Microsoft uh, Windows Server operating system. We have uh, seen through all of the nine videos uh, how this operating system looks like, how we can interact with it, what are the new features in this operating system. Uh, so we have seen a lot concerning this operating system. We have created a, a primary domain controller on this operating system. We have done a lot of things. We have created group policies. We have done... Uh, we have uh, uh, created a uh, group policy center store location and add the different group policy templates. So we have done a lot of things actually. So the previous video, we have created the additional domain controller and we are planning in the future to add more roles on this virtual machine. We need to add a DHCP role. We need to add a WSOS role. We need to add a file server role so we can see the different or the famous roles in any multinational organization, how we can set them up, how we can uh, uh, set uh, them according to the best practices. We will see how this will be done uh, through the upcoming videos and today actually, and we will see how this will work on the new operating system of Microsoft. So we will see that and I will try to use the AI tools du during our journey. We have seen that we are working currently with Cloud 3 and ChatGPT 4 and I will add to the mix a new tool actually it's not a new one but I didn't work on it before it is perplexity which is very very good searching tool maybe it's not uh, a good AI tool like ChatGPT or Cloud 3 but no it's in searching it is very very or it supersedes uh, uh, ChatGPT 4 and Cloud 3 in its searching capabilities so we will see today actually when we're working on how to configure the HSP, what are the answers of perplexity and how its answers is much more uh, uh, rich than ChatGPT4 or Cloud3. So let's go and begin our lab. Today we will go and begin uh, the installation of the HSP server. So this is the first role we need to focus on and then we will work with the file server. Okay, so this is our additional domain controller. One of the recommendations is not to add DHCP to the domain controller. So the domain controller should be separated than the DHCP. You should not install DHCP and domain controller on one server, okay? This is one of the best practices, but if you have a limited number of servers, so this will be the case, or this you can work with this scenario. You can install the primary domain controller separately, on a server without any additional roles installed on the server, then you can install an additional domain controller on another server and put on it additional roles like the DHCP and file server and WSOS. And this is implemented in my work environment. And this is a best, or this is a, one of the uh, real scenarios in the world. You can work with this scenario, okay? But if you have enough servers then it should be or, or the best solution is to install the additional domain controller separately on a server the DHCP separately on a server the file server separately on a server the WSOS separately on a server if you plan to put all on one server then you should have enough hardware resources you should have uh, uh, enough storage hard disk for the file server enough RAM for the WSOS because it is RAM eating uh, service uh, service okay you need to uh, have a good backup plan for this server okay because it contains a lot of roles uh, uh, actually a lot of roles and you need should have a disaster recovery plan if this server fails up because it's act or it will act as a single point of failure so you need to make sure that you have all of these considerations in mind if you plan to have uh, more roles on one server so let's begin our video now we will open the additional domain controller <laughs> now we will see this is the uh, interactive message okay now we will log in with the additional uh, so log into the additional domain controller using using my uh, domain admin account <laughs> okay 
we can see there is a lot of group policies applied this we have created earlier and we have discussed the different or seven famous group policies that is implemented in any multinational organization please refer to my previous video here we can see this also there is a crash so I need to power off the virtual machine and open it back because the system crashed or the virtual machine crashed I think it's the operating system anyway we have seen that this is a common uh, error happens with the preview edition of this uh, Windows Server uh, operating system okay now we give him the reason why this uh, happened this is a hang with the operating system now we will open the server manager and we will begin adding the DHCP server role okay so this is the server manager we will open it it's very very simple the uh, configuration will be very simple we will just add the role and then begin creating the different options in the DHCP we will configure the scope IP scope we will configure uh, the different uh, server options that will be distributed using the DHCP the default gateway the DNS servers okay and we will also activate the allow and deny filters or Mac filters we will see that any we see this message saying that you can manage your cloud services and uh, cloud uh, servers and your on-premise servers using the Windows Admin Center uh, in addition to the Azure Arc so you will add the Azure Arc uh, it's you can use Azure Arc and the new Admin Center okay so I think you can add the Azure Arc with the Windows Admin Center so you can manage both the Azure uh, cloud servers and your on-premise servers so this is one of the things and actually Windows Admin Center is a very very good tool it still needs more development you can use it to uh, uh, to manage uh, uh, cloud servers in Azure and on-premise servers so this is one thing so now we will see here this is the dashboard this is a very very critical uh, item you should uh, revise it regularly to see uh, what will happen so yeah I'll pin this to the taskbar this is one thing So you will see here this is uh, if you see a red uh, warning here this means that there is something wrong you need to check for example here is saying that you see a service that is not running which is enter site messaging this is related to replication uh, service of the active directory this is enter site if you have uh, uh, your domain uh, spreading across uh, different physical locations so for example if you have a domain and a couple of servers in uh, a site and another couple of servers in another site for example you have a couple of servers in uh, United States and a couple of servers in Egypt for example and they are in one domain so they are uh, typically in different sites uh, this inter-site messaging service is a part of the replication or it replicates certain information between the two active directory sites so this is basically a service that works on replication between active directory sites okay so it is stopped because actually I have only one site okay I don't have a couple of sites so this is not uh, needed if you have a couple of sites or a, co a couple of active directory sites then this service should be uh, important to uh, focus on and to see so for example it is stopped so as I said before I have only one site or active directory site so it is not needed so you can search the internet and see what is inter site messaging service but anyway if you have any other service that is stopped you should uh, or you should see the dashboard and see the red warnings you should see if this service uh, is it normal to be stopped it is, if it is automatic then it will start automatically 
uh, by itself okay so you can uh, wait for one or two minutes and revise and see if this service will begin or not if it does not begin you should investigate and see the event viewer to see if uh, there is any uh, issues concerning this service if there is another service that this service depend on and it is not working so uh, this service is not working uh, in, 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 in turn or in uh, of course it's not working because it is depend, dependent on, upon another service or in or it is depend depending upon another service so you should see always the errors here and check and uh, make sure that you uh, resolve the error okay so here i will just start the service even though i don't need it but just to make this error uh, disappear and i think if i waited for a couple of minutes it will uh, it will uh, uh, start automatically So now what we need to do, we need to add roles and features, okay, and then we will begin the uh, installation of the DHCP. Next, next. It will take some time, okay. Now we can uh, check the DHCP server. And then next, we will add the features. Then next, then continue. Okay. So now we will go to this feature, or okay, now we tell him to restart the destination server automatically if required. Then we will install uh, the role administra administration tools and the feature itself. Okay, so now it is installed. We need to complete the DHCP configuration. We need to authorize. Okay, we need to authorize the DHCP uh, to be the authorized server in the domain. So by authorizing DHCP, I am telling it that you are the only server that is allowed to. Uh, distribute IP addresses to the workstations and by authorized, authorizing it it will also help the server to uh, update the DNS records in the active directory okay as the IP addresses changes or as the IP addresses of the workstations are changed okay so it should be updated uh, in the DNS records okay so this is we see authorized HP server on target computer if domain joined. Okay, so we can see we have two groups that will be allowed to manage this DHCP server. If you put one user in the HP administrations administrators, then he is uh, he will have full uh, access to the server. As for uh, the HP server feature, okay, and the HP users, I think these are normal users. Anyway, we don't uh, I don't use this actually because I use my domain admin account which has a superior uh superior uh, superior uh, uh, permissions it can manage everything in the domain including the dhcp and other features so let's continue here we authorize so here we can see this is the user that will be used to authorize this dhcp server this is the domain admin so it is a high uh, user privilege okay high user privilege uh, or the user that has excessive rights or have uh, more rights okay so now we will authorize the server done now we can begin the configuration of the dhcp we need to uh, first of all we need to see this event here this is the hang or the crash that happens we can see here that it is saying it is kernel power so it it uh, it is seeing this error as a power error you should always also provide the event viewer for any critical events like that you should see if there is any critical event you should focus on it and see ok 
okay if this critical event is uh, dangerous so for example i know here that this happens because of the crash so this is normal for me i need to tell him to hide the alert if this happened in your environment and uh, you you, you sh there is no abnormal thing happens for example there is no e e electricity cart or something you should investigate so you should make uh, sh make sure to revise your server event viewer logs to see uh, if there is any problems and focus on the critical events there is the critical and there is the errors and there is the warning you should focus on the critical and the, uh, and the errors and the warnings you should uh, regularly check uh, your server logs and check for these events okay so here we will see this is the alert and by the way from this server manager you can manage the local server and you can manage remote servers so you can add in the server manager for example you can add the domain controller the primary domain controller to this server manager so you can manage the additional and the domain from one server manager console you can add all of the servers here and you can manage them it is something like the windows admin center it is uh, it is good i have used it when i was working with the windows core uh, Windows Core Edition, it was a good one, by the way. So you can use the Server Manager as a centralized console to manage all of your remote and local servers, okay, or, or your local server and your remote servers. Anyway, so we will continue. Now we need to open uh, the console or the DHCP and begin the configuration. So we have a custom console. I will here add the DHCP uh, feature. So here we will open the console and then begin. Here we will add the DHCP console to our uh, custom console and then we will begin the configuration of the DHCP. Here we can see this is the DHCP. Okay. I will configure it and then ask the AI what are the best practices when creating the DHCP. You will see the different AI answers and we can benefit from these answers to make a, a best uh, uh, practice configuration for our DHCP. Now, I think I need to go and uh, maybe check the Windows updates or add uh, a couple of icons to my desktop. Okay, maybe the control panel icon, I think. So here I'm checking for updates. Here we need to uh, configure, we we'll see this IP version 4 and IP version 6, and then we need to, to configure the scope, the IP address scope that will be uh, be distributed. Now we tell him new scope, and then this will be our workstation scope. So we have servers, servers will be assigned static IP addresses, and the workstations will be assigned automatic IP addresses. So we say matrix workstation, so this is for the workstations. You can configure a scope for the mobiles, for example. And this will be having a different setting. Okay, we will see that when we see the AI recommendation, uh, it will talk about DHCP and the mobile uh, devices. Okay, so here we have the matrix workstation scope. And then we will the start the scope. You need to make sure that uh, there is a couple of addresses reserved uh, for the static uh, for example, if you have servers, you will need to uh, exclude some of the IPs to be added statically to your servers or your print servers, for example. So here I will begin distributing IP addresses from 7920. Okay, you can see that uh, I am beginning from 20, not from 1, because from 1 to 19, it is reserved for my servers and uh, print servers. Okay they will be assigned statically so my secluding from 1 to 19 i will begin distributing from 20 to 200 so here i have about uh, 180 ip addresses and the rest also uh, i will exclude it as i said before for the servers and the uh, print servers so 
we will see here this is the scope and this is the subnet mask so this depends upon your workstation numbers here this will uh, differ according your uh, according to your needs here we can see exclude if you need to exclude some range from the 20 to 200 to exclude them you can tell him to exclude a couple of IP addresses from this range anyway we don't have any execution here the lease what the IP will uh, will be held by the workstation for how much time for eight days okay this is the uh, default uh, lease time here I tell him to configure the options now we need to tell the DHCP the default gateway so it will distribute it to the workstations so they can access the internet now we have 192.168.79.2 this is the gateway then it will automatic automatically get the DNS servers so this will be distributed to the workstations so they can communicate with each other efficiently and uh, they can access the internet as well we have uh, set up dns forwards on our dns servers so this is very very critical the dns and the gateway to be distributed to the uh, the workstations and if you have wins this is uh, an old version of dns or this was a replacement or the wins was acting as a dns but now it is uh, depreciated or almost not used in any uh, environment because the DNS server is the new version of Wins. Okay. Anyway, so now we need to activate the scope and then finish. And then we need to uh, uh, activate two options here. First of all, we need to uh, see uh, the scope options. Here I am just adding uh, or I have repeating my uh, DNS server. Okay. It is repeated twice. So I need to remove the duplicate entry and then we need to here th this is the setting we need to uh, allow or to open the option of allow and deny filter this is options that allow the dhcp to control which workstation take ip address from him for, so for example if i need a couple of machines to take ip address from my dhcp then i put them in the allow filter and this works with the MAC address. So you need to add the MAC address of the workstations to the DHCP in the allow filter. So you are telling the DHCP to give these workstations IP addresses based on their MAC address. If you need to block uh, giving IP addresses to some workstations, then you can put them in the deny filter. This is, for example, for mobile devices or something or any device that you need to block it from taking IP addresses from the DHCP. The best practice is to put all of your workstations and devices that you see or, th or that you consider them to be allowed to take IP address, put them in the allow section, okay? Put all of them in the allow section. And if any other device appears uh, not in the allow section, it will be automatically uh, set as denied or it will be considered as denied. Take care if you add any new workstation to the domain, you should always put it in the allow section. Okay, you should do this and reload or restart the DHCP service. Okay, so this is one thing to note. Okay, anyway, so this is uh, the DHCP. Okay, there is encounter anyway. So this is the DHCP uh, feature. I need to ask the AI tool for a couple of or ask it for the recommendations so if we go there and ask the dhcp or ask the chat gpt for what are the best practices for creating windows dhcp in a domain environment let's see what is the answer and we will ask also uh, perplexity and uh, and cloth three so let's see the answer here Creating a DHCP server in a Windows domain environment requires careful planning and execution to ensure network stability and efficient IP address management. Here are some best practices to follow when setting up a DHCP server within a Windows domain. 1. Use a dedicated server. It's best to use a dedicated server for DHCP to ensure that the DHCP service doesn't compete with other services for resources. This improves performance and reliability. 
Two, integrate with Active Directory. When DHCP is integrated with Active Directory, it allows for secure dynamic updates and easier management. This integration also allows for better handling of DNS registrations, which is crucial for a domain environment. Con3, configure DHCP failover. Setting up DHCP failover is essential for high availability. In Windows Server 2012 and later, you can configure DHCP in a failover relationship where two servers can back up each other to provide DHCP service without interruption. Four, scope planning. Carefully plan your DHCP scopes. Define a scope for each subnet which includes range of IP addresses to be allocated, subnet mask, default gateway, DNS servers, lease duration, typically shorter for mobile or temporary devices, and longer for stationary infrastructure. Five, reservations. Use reservations for devices that need a consistent IP address, such as printers, servers, or other critical infrastructure. This ensures that these devices always receive the same IP address. Six, secure DHCP. DHCP snooping, enable DHCP snooping on network switches to prevent unauthorized DHCP servers. MAC filtering, implement MAC address filtering if specific devices need to be allowed or denied. Audit logging, keep DHCP audit logging enabled to monitor the assignment of IP addresses and help trace malicious activity. R7, optimize DHCP server options. Configure global and scope-specific options that provide necessary information to clients, such as option 003, router gateways, option 006, DNS servers, option 0115, domain name for seamless domain integration. Eight, regularly update and patch. Regularly update and patch the DHCP server to protect against vulnerabilities. This includes both the operating system and the DHCP server application. Nine, backup and disaster recovery. Regularly back up your DHCP database and configuration. In Windows, you can automate this by scheduling a backup of the DHCP server. This backup can then be used for recovery in case of server failure. 10. Monitoring and performance tuning. Monitor the DHCP server's performance and utilization regularly. Check metrics like address pool exhaustion, renewal success rates, and error logs to adjust configurations as needed. Implementing these best practices will help ensure that your DHCP server is secure, reliable, and efficiently serves your Windows domain. So you can see this is very, very good uh, recommendations. For example, for the backup and disaster, you can backup the DHCP database through the PowerShell. So you can uh, make a schedule task uh, to run a PowerShell script to backup the database of the DHCP, and it can be uh, saved to a secure location. So this is this can be done easily, and I actually have done it before in my Terminator lab when I was uh, transferring or migrating my DHCP. Okay, so regular updates, this is normal, you can do that. One thing here I need to ask the AI how we can audit DHCP, what are the logs, or how we can, uh, uh, can activate the audit logging, how we can this, and I need also to ask it about uh, DHCP snooping, what is DHCP snooping? I need to ask about this option, but anyway, first, Let's uh, go to the second question. What about explain the audit logging in secure uh, secure DHCP? Give me technical steps how to so I can how I can audit the DHCP. What are the option and where to activate it? So let's see this step and how it is done. As we see, very very detailed answer and a good answer actually. Let's go and see. In a Windows environment. Enabling DHCP audit logging is important for security and compliance, as it helps you keep track of all the IP address assignments and other DHCP-related activities. This log can provide valuable information about the server's operations and can be essential for troubleshooting or monitoring for suspicious activities. Here are the technical steps to enable and configure DHCP audit logging on a Windows server. Step 1. Enable DHCP audit logging. DHCP audit logging is enabled by default in Windows Server. However, it's good practice to verify that it is active and configure it as per your requirements. To check the status and manage settings, follow these steps. One, open DHCP Management Console. You can access this by typing dhpmgmt.msc in the Run dialog, Windows key R. Two, navigate to your DHCP server. In the DHCP console, expand the server name to see the list of configured scopes. 3. View audit logs. To check if the audit logging is enabled and to view logs, go to the folder where DHCP logs are stored. 
typically see Windows System32 DHCP. Step 2. Configure Log File Settings To manage the settings of DHCP log files, 1. Open DHCP Server Properties. Right-click on the DHCP server name in the DHCP console and select Properties. 2. Go to the Advanced tab. Here, you can adjust the settings related to audit logs. 3. Configure audit log file path and size. You can change the location of the log files if needed and specify the maximum size of the log file. The default maximum size is 10 MB, but it can be increased if more extensive logging is required. Step 3. Review and manage DHCP logs. The DHCP server logs events daily, and the logs are stored in files named DHCP serve log log. Each log entry includes details such as the date and time of the event, the IP address least, and the MAC address of the client. To analyze these logs, 1. Navigate to log files. By default, they are located in C Windows System 32 DHCP. 2. Open and review logs. Use a text editor or log analysis tool to open and review these files. Look for event IDs and descriptions to understand what actions were taken by the DHCP server. Step 4. Regular monitoring. Set up a regular schedule to check these logs, or use automated tools to alert you about unusual activities. This can include a high number of failed leases, unusual lease durations, or requests from unknown MAC addresses. Step 5. Backup log files. Regularly backup your DHCP logs to secure storage. This ensures that you have historical data available for audits or investigations. Step 6. Integrate with CM tools. For advanced monitoring, integrate DHCP logging with security information and event management CEM tools. These tools can help correlate DHCP logs with other security logs, enhancing your network's overall security posture. By following these steps, you can ensure that your DHCP server's audit logging is not only enabled but also configured properly to provide the necessary insights into your network's IP address management and security. So you can see here how we can uh, see the logs and where to get them. And another additional point, you can see the event viewer and see the DHCP event uh, IDs. But this is one good explanation how we can uh, enable uh, DHCP logging and where to get the logs. Another point I ask him to uh, verify monitoring perf and performance tune up. So how we can monitor the performance of DHCP, how this can be done, where to get this monitoring tool how we can activate this monitoring tool. So I asked him another question, how we can uh, explain mo uh, point 10, monitoring and performance tuning, give me technical steps how to do that. So let's see how we can monitor the performance of the DHCP. So let's see the answer. Monitoring and performance tuning for a DHCP server in a Windows environment involves several key activities to ensure that the server operates efficiently and remains reliable. Here are some technical steps to effectively monitor and tune the performance of your DHCP server. Step 1. Monitor DHCP server performance using Performance Monitor. Performance Monitor is a Windows tool that tracks various system and service metrics. For DHCP, you can monitor parameters like packet processing rates and database operations. 1. Open Performance Monitor, press WinR, type perfmon.msc, and hit Enter. 2. Add counters for DHCP, click on Performance Monitor under Monitoring Tools. Right-click on the graph area and choose Add Counters. Select DHCP Server from the list of available counters. Choose specific counters, such as Packets Received Sec, Packets Expired Sec, and Conflict Check Queue Length. Click Add and then OK to start viewing the data. Step 2. Review DHCP Server Logs for Errors and Warnings. Regularly review the DHCP Server Event Logs to identify any unusual activities or errors that could indicate performance issues. 1. Access Event Viewer. Type eventvr.msc in the Run dialog. 2. Navigate to DHCP Logs. Go to Windows Logs, System. Filter the current log by the DHCP server source to find relevant entries. 3. Analyze logs. Look for warnings, errors, or frequent informational events that might suggest issues, such as address conflicts or network errors. Configure DHCP server audit logging. As mentioned earlier, enable and configure DHCP audit logging to track detailed operational data. This can also help in performance monitoring by providing insights into lease assignments and renewals. 
Our step four, use network monitoring tools. Implement network monitoring tools to observe DHCP traffic on your network. Tools like Wireshark can capture and analyze DHCP packets, helping identify issues such as excessive DHCP requests that could indicate a denial of service attack, frequent renewals, or format issues in requests. Step five, optimize DHCP scope and server settings. Optimize your DHCP settings based on monitoring data. One, adjust lease duration. If you notice a high volume of lease renewals, consider adjusting the lease duration. Short leases can increase traffic, while long leases can lead to IP address exhaustion. Two, review and configure DHCP options. Ensure DHCP options like DNS servers, default gateways, and others are correctly configured to avoid client-side issues. Step six, implement failover clustering for high availability and load balancing. Configure DHCP failover. One, set up DHCP failover in the DHCP management console. Right-click on a scope and select configure failover. Two, choose a failover mode. Decide between load balance mode and hot standby mode depending on your redundancy needs. Step seven, regular updates and patch management. Ensure your DHCP server and its supporting network infrastructure are regularly updated. One, apply OS and software updates. Regularly check and install updates for Windows Server and any network management tools. Two, check firmware on networking equipment. Update firmware on routers, switches, and other network devices that interact with DHCP. Step eight, capacity planning. Use the collected performance data for future capacity planning. Analyze trends in IP usage and network load. Plan for network expansion or reconfiguration based on usage patterns and growth forecasts. These steps will help you ensure that your DHCP server is not only stable and reliable, but also optimized for the best performance within your network environment. So we can see here this, how we can monitor and use the monitoring data to uh, enhance the performance of the HCP. Are there any products that can monitor the HCP? Free and commercial third party tools. So if you can have a tool that can monitor the logs and the performance, instead of the performance monitor in Windows and checking the logs manually. So we know there is a lot of uh, free and uh, uh, third commercial products. Let's see uh, what is the answer of ChatGPT. All of this need to uh, revise it and see it. Yes, there are several third party tools available for monitoring DHCP servers, ranging from free utilities to more comprehensive commercial solutions. These tools can provide detailed insights into DHCP operations, track lease statistics, and help diagnose network issues. Here are some notable options. Free tools. One, Wireshark. Description, Wireshark is a network protocol analyzer that allows you to capture and interactively browse the traffic running on a computer network. It can be used to monitor DHCP traffic in detail. Use case. Ideal for troubleshooting specific issues or inspecting DHCP transactions in real time. Two, SolarWinds free DHCP scope monitor. Description, although primarily known for their commercial products, SolarWinds offers a free tool that specifically monitors DHCP scopes and displays which scopes are nearing capacity. Use case, useful for admins who need to keep an eye on scope utilization without comprehensive network management tools. Three. Microsoft Network Monitor Description Network Monitor is a deprecated tool but still available for download. It can capture network traffic and analyze DHCP communications. Use case Good for organizations using older systems or those looking for a no-cost solution from Microsoft. Commercial Tools 1. SolarWinds IP Address Manager IVM Description This is a comprehensive DHCP DNS and IP address management tool. It integrates monitoring and management of DHCP scopes across multiple servers. Features, automatic IP tracking, DHCP DNS management, and reporting capabilities. Use case, best for medium to large organizations needing robust, centralized IP management. Two, manage engine oputils, description. Oputils offers real-time monitoring and management of IP addresses and switch ports, including DHCP scopes. Features, IP address and switch port management, rogue device detection, and bandwidth monitoring. Use case, suitable for businesses that need integrated tools for managing network resources. Three, Infoblox IPAM and DHCP description. Infoblox provides enterprise-grade DHCP management and IP address management solutions that integrate with DNS and network automation. Features, 
high availability, DNS and DHCP activity logging and robust reporting tools. Use case, ideal for large networks or enterprises with complex dynamic environments. Four, BlueCat IPAM. Description. BlueCat offers an adaptive DNS solution that includes IP address management along with DNS and DHCP management. Features, centralized management, automation capabilities, and security-focused features. Use case, suitable for organizations that need a secure, scalable, and adaptive network infrastructure management solution. These tools range in functionality from basic DHCP monitoring to full network infrastructure management. Depending on the size of your organization and your specific needs, like compliance, scale, and integration requirements, one of these solutions might be appropriate. For smaller environments or specific DHCP-related troubleshooting, the free tools may be sufficient, while larger enterprises might benefit from the comprehensive features offered by the commercial products. So you can see very, very good analyze and very good recommendations and very, very good detailed steps how we can uh, secure and monitor our DHCP. Let's see the perplexity answer, which was more uh, rich. Let's see uh, what was the answer. For example, what are the best practices for creating Windows DHCP? Let me show you the answer of perplexity and read it loudly. Just a moment. The best practices for configuring a Windows DHCP server include several key recommendations from the sources provided. Avoid putting DHCP on your domain controller. It is advised not to put DHCP on your domain controller to ensure better server performance one. Use DHCP failover. Implement DHCP failover to ensure redundancy and load balancing for DHCP servers 1. Central versus distributed DHCP server. Consider whether a central or distributed DHCP server setup suits your network better 1. Avoid static IP assignments. Instead of static IP assignments, use DHCP reservations for better management 1. Exclude IPs from the DHCP scope. Exclude specific IPs from the DHCP scope to prevent conflicts 1. Document IP addresses or use an IPM. Properly document IP addresses or use an IP address management IPM tool for efficient management 1. Use DHCP relay agents. DHCP relay agents help in forwarding DHCP requests and responses between different network segments 3. Backup DHCP server. Regularly backup the DHCP server configuration to ensure quick recovery in case of system crashes 13. DHCP MAC address filtering. Utilize MAC address filtering to control IP address assignment based on MAC addresses 1. Run DHCP Best Practice Analyzer. Use Microsoft's Best Practice Analyzer tool to check DHCP configuration against guidelines 1. By following these best practices, you can optimize the configuration and management of your Windows DHCP server for efficient network operation and security. So you can, this is a more, more rich answer. And we can see that if we go there, he give us a lot of sources the, he combined them uh, in 10 uh, recommendations, but here I see one of these uh, sources which was giving 16 best practice, which was very, very good. And one of the things that uh, take my attention was avoid the static IP address assignment. I know that from my work uh, experience that we should always put static IP addresses to servers, and this should be managed by the IT, or I should if I am the, uh, the administrator, I should uh, be the only one to put static IP addresses on the servers. He say avoid the static IP assignment. So he says that it is better to put them in the DHCP in the reserved section. Uh, 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 
not to uh, put it manually by myself. So he, he preferred to put uh, the uh, static IPs in the reserved section in uh, or in the uh, reserved IP address section in the DHCP. So I try to go to the documentation and see or go to the website and see why this uh, recommendation is said and what is his uh, his point of view. So let's go and see avoid static IP address assignment and use DHCP reservation. He's saying that assigning IP static IP address to computers, printers, or phones, or any other end device is a pain. Okay, if the, if you have a lot, here is what happens when you statically assign an IP address. Help desk replaces the device not aware of the static IP. Okay, now the device lost connection completely or partially. Uh, help desk send tickets to the network team to fix the issue. The network team sends take it back to the help desk with the static IP. Uh, help desk now has to go to the device and assign the IP. So I have been in the above situation plenty of times and I have said it's a pain. To avoid all of this, just use the HTTP reservation instead of static IP assignments. For anything that needs a fixed IP address, I use the HTTP reservation. The one exception is infrastructure devices like routers and switches. Those get static IP address. Uh, a good view or a good point of view, but uh, I have small number of IP addresses and I remember or static IP addresses, I remember them. So this is basically simple to remember. And if the DHCP is down, how this IP address can be reached or can be taken if the DHCP is completely down. So the static IP address, it is a good uh, uh, thing to do. Okay, I prefer the static way. Uh, not to put it in the reservation section. As I said before, if the DHCP service is down, you will not be able to take this IP address. Okay, he's saying that this should be done or to the routers and switches, but this is another point of view that you can consider, but I prefer the static one, okay? So another point also that took my attention, run the DHCP best uh, practice analyzer. I didn't use it actually, but uh, this is a good option and it is good to use a uh, uh, the uh, Microsoft uh, guidelines to see your DHCP. Microsoft Best Practice Analyzer is a tool that checks the DHCP configuration against Microsoft guidelines. The Best Practice Analyzer is built into Windows Server and this is how you can reach it. You go to the DHCP and then run the BBA. This is the Best Practice Analyzer. Then you can run it and then it will take or will get uh, results and then you can see here uh, what are the BBA scanner should help discover any misconfigurations, review your results, and make uh, any changes you feel necessary. Okay, so this is one thing. This is very good. You can check the documentation, by the way, or check the website. This is very, very good. Uh, but this is uh, uh, a summary. And we can see here that there is a lot of uh, sites you can revise, but here the perplexity is summarizing these and giving you uh, how you can access them by uh, clicking on these numbers, okay? So you can see here, for example, that this is number one, number two, number three, number four. So this recommendation is from website number one or this. And we can see, for example, uh, that, for example, number uh, three, this is from the website number three, target, tech target. So we can see very, very simple to follow. So here I'm asking him to explain in simple terms because this was a little bit uh, technical. So I needed to be summarized in a simple term. So let's see what was the answer of perplexity. Here are the best practices for creating a Windows DHCP server explained in simple terms. Don't mix DHCP with domain controller. Keep your DHCP server separate from your domain controller to ensure better performance. Make DHCP servers redundant. Set up multiple DHCP servers to ensure that if one fails, another can take over. Choose central or distributed DHCP. Decide whether to have a single central DHCP server or multiple distributed servers based on your network's needs. Use DHCP reservations instead of static IPs. Reserve specific IP addresses for specific devices instead of assigning them static IPs. Exclude IPs from DHCP scope. 
exclude certain IPs from the DHCP scope to prevent conflicts. Document IP addresses or use IPM. Keep track of IP addresses or use a tool to manage them efficiently. Use DHCP relay agents. Use agents to forward DHCP requests and responses between different network segments. Backup DHCP server. Regularly backup your DHCP server configuration to ensure quick recovery in case of system crashes. Control IP address assignment with MAC filtering. Use MAC addresses to control which devices can get IP addresses. Check DHCP configuration with Best Practice Analyzer. Use Microsoft's Best Practice Analyzer tool to check your DHCP configuration against guidelines. By following these simple best practices, you can ensure your Windows DHCP server is configured correctly and efficiently manages your network's IP addresses. So we can see here, as for the MAC filtering, we have already configured this. If you go and see this option here, the MAC filter, remember that you have done this in the, uh, let's go and see, for example, here is the MAC filter. How we can do that, if you go, this will be done from the allow and deny filter, the one that we have already configured from a couple of seconds, okay? So this is very, very good answer of perplexity. Let's see when I ask him, are there any products that can monitor the HCP, the free and commercial products? Let's see his answer, which was uh, a little bit closer to ChatGPT for answer, just a moment. <clears throat> yes, there are products available that can monitor DHCP servers, both free and commercial third-party tools. One such tool mentioned in the search results is Pessler PRDG, which is highlighted as a favorite DHCP monitoring tool due to its comprehensive features and ease of use. PRDG offers built-in sensors that cover various network monitoring needs, including DHCP server monitoring, without the need for additional purchases. It is extensible allowing for the deployment of third-party sensors or custom sensors to meet specific requirements one. Additionally, Manage Engine OpUtils is another tool that provides DHCP monitoring capabilities. OpUtils offers active monitoring, integration with Active Directory, real-time DHCP scope monitoring, automated reports, and instant alerts for effective troubleshooting. It supports popular DHCP servers like Microsoft, Palo Alto, Linux ISC, Cisco, and Fortinet. OpUtils is available in both free and professional editions, with the free version offering 11 tools, including a DHCP scope monitor. 1. These tools, among others, provide options for monitoring DHCP servers, catering to both free and commercial needs, offering a range of features to ensure efficient management and monitoring of DHCP services within a network. So you can see a very, very good answer. And here what I have done, I have taken this website or this, this page and asked ChatGPT, so summarize it and give me a, a summary. So he's saying here, let me see or what he does he say about this uh, article. The guide from Active Directory Pro on DHCP best practices highlights several key strategies, including isolating DHCP from domain controllers to prevent performance and security issues, using DHCP failover for high availability, and opting for centralized versus distributed DHCP setups depending on the network's size and connectivity. It also advises on using DHCP reservations instead of static IP assignments, implementing subnetting for network optimization, and monitoring DHCP activities with tools like PowerShell for effective management. For further details, you can check out the full guide, activedirectorycom dhcp best practices. Very, very good uh, summarization of the uh, 16 points, but here I asked him to put it in a table and make it more readable. So let's see uh, what was his answer. This is the 16 points and a brief, uh, a brief answer or a brief explanation of each point. Here's a simplified table summarizing the 16 DHCP best practices discussed in the Active Directory Pro Guide. Point, explanation, separate DHCP from DCs, avoid installing DHCP on domain controllers to reduce security risks and performance issues. 
Use DHCP failover. Implement failover to ensure DHCP availability during server downtimes. Central versus distributed DHCP. Choose between a centralized DHCP server for all sites or local DHCP servers based on network layout and needs. Avoid static IPs. Use DHCP reservations instead of static IP assignments to simplify management and reduce errors. Exclude IPs from DHCP scope. Exclude a range of IPs from the DHCP pool for devices that require static IPs, like routers and other critical equipment. Learn PowerShell for DHCP. Use PowerShell to manage DHCP more efficiently, especially in larger environments. Understand subnetting. Use subnetting to enhance network performance and security by isolating different types of traffic. Set appropriate lease durations. Adjust DHCP lease times based on the type of device to optimize network efficiency. Use IP conflict detection sparingly. Enable IP conflict detection only when necessary to prevent network disruptions. Run DHCP Best Practice Analyzer. Utilize Microsoft's tool to check DHCP configurations against best practices. Document IPs or use IPAM. Keep a record of IP configurations or use an IP address management tool for larger networks. Set DHCP server options. Configure global or scope-specific options to manage network settings automatically. Implement DHCP relay agents. Use relay agents to manage DHCP traffic across segmented networks. Prevent rogue DHCP servers. Implement measures like DHCP snooping to block unauthorized DHCP servers. Backup DHCP server. Regularly backup DHCP configurations to prevent data loss during failures. Use DHCP MAC address filtering. Control network access by allowing or denying devices based on their MAC addresses. Each point addresses a specific aspect of DHCP management, aimed at optimizing performance, enhancing security, and simplifying administrative tasks. For detailed steps and explanations, you can check out the full guide, heactivedirectorypro.com com slash DHCP best practices. So you can see here, this is also a very good summarization of uh, the article. And we can see here also the perplexity uh, has another simple one. So we can see the different AI tools answers are uh, completing each other. But here, I, I when I uh, see this article, he said that 20 thoughts on the top 16 best practices. I see some uh, comments. Some of them are uh, criticizing that the DHCP and uh, domain controller should be on one server. One say that you can put DC and DHCP on one server. So I asked the AI to analyze these comments and see uh, if they are correct or not, because this is completely criticizing that uh, you should separate DC from the HCP, but here this was the answer of ChatGPT. Uh, it said that this is correct. Okay, let's see here, for example, telling him to summarize in this page, section 20 thoughts. Is this one to summarize this section and give this give me the comments? And here I ask it to analyze it and give me his uh, point of view about these. So let's see what was the answer. The section 20 thoughts on top 16 DHCP best practices, the ultimate guide from the Active Directory Pro website features a range of comments from readers who discuss their own experiences and perspectives on DHCP management. Commenters share insights on DHCP configurations, express agreement or disagreement with the article's recommendations, and occasionally correct misunderstandings or errors. Some provide additional tips and express appreciation for the guide, highlighting its practical usefulness. The overall tone is collaborative, with a focus on enhancing understanding and effectiveness in managing DHCP. For more details, you can read the full discussion here, activedirectory.com slash dhbestbestpractices. So you can see I asked him to arrange these comments in a simple table, discuss and evaluate the comment. So this was the curious one, or this one that was criticizing the idea of uh, separating the DHCP from the domain controller. Let's see the comments, and I will ask the AI to evaluate them later. So let's see. Here's a simple table that organizes and evaluates a selection of comments from the 20 thoughts on top 16 DHCP best practices, the ultimate guide section. Commenter, key point evaluation, and evaluation. J.F. Suarez criticizes the idea that DHCP should not be installed on a domain controller, arguing there are no real benefits and questioning the validity of the concerns raised.
this comment is critical and challenges the article's advice based on practical experience, suggesting that the impact of DHCP on domain controllers may be overstated. Robert Allen defends the article's stance on separate DHCP servers for security and performance reasons, citing real-world issues like CPU usage spikes due to IP conflict detection. Provides a counterpoint to Suarez, reinforcing the article's position with specific examples, which adds credibility to the recommendation for separating roles. Michael praises the article and shares plans to use the information in technical training. This positive feedback highlights the article's utility and relevance to IT professionals looking to enhance their practices. RAN discusses preferences for handling IP address ranges and asks for input on best practices engages the community for further insights, which fosters collaborative learning and sharing of best practices among professionals. These comments reflect a mix of agreement and critique, illustrating the diversity of opinions and experiences among IT professionals regarding DHCP best practices. This discussion enriches the understanding of the topic by providing real-world perspectives and alternative viewpoints. For a more detailed look at the full discussion, you can visit the guide here, hheactivedirectory.com, dish best practices. So you can see here, I'm telling him to evaluate commenter Jeff Suarez based on a real case scenario. So here he is criticizing that we should separate DC from the HCP. I'm telling him to evaluate and see if his comment is right based on real case scenarios. So let's see, we can see here the AI is very, very good in uh, evaluating and uh, not giving uh, information without any uh, uh, understanding. He is comprehending and he is asking and you can go back and further in this discussion. So let's see. Evaluating commenter J.F. Suarez's argument against separating DHCP from domain controllers <laughs> requires considering real-world scenarios. Suarez argues there are no significant benefits to keeping DHCP separate and questions the impact of DHCP on domain controllers' performance and security. Real-world evaluation. 1. Performance impact. DHCP typically has minimal resource requirements. However, in large environments or when additional features like IP conflict detection are enabled, DHCP can impact a server's CPU usage, potentially affecting other services on the same machine. Suarez's claim may not hold in such scenarios where DHCP's impact could be significant. 2. Security risks. Hosting DHCP on domain controllers increases the attack surface, as vulnerabilities in DHCP could potentially compromise the entire domain. Real-world security best practices advise against co-hosting services on critical infrastructure to minimize risk exposure. 3. Operational flexibility. Separating DHCP from domain controllers allows more flexibility in maintenance and upgrades. Suarez underestimates the potential disruption caused by rebooting a server that handles multiple critical roles. In conclusion, while Suarez brings up valid points about the perceived overhead of managing separate servers, the benefits of separating critical roles for performance stability and security in certain scenarios cannot be overlooked. The separation is particularly crucial in larger or more complex environments. So this is a very good uh, evaluating of the answer, and I prefer to separate the DHCP from the D from the domain controller. This is a good thing, not a bad thing. So this was the answer of perplexity, the answer of ChatGPT. Let's go to Claude, the last one. We will see what is his answer, and uh, we will stop at that point. Uh, the upcoming video we will begin uh, configuring the file server and see also the best practices concerning this uh, server feature just a moment creating a dhcp dynamic host configuration protocol server in a Windows domain environment is a common task for network administrators. Here are some best practices to follow. Plan the DHCP scope. Define the IP address range, subnet mask, default gateway, and DNS server addresses that will be assigned to clients within the scope. Make sure the scope does not overlap with any existing IP address ranges on the network.
Install the DHCP server role. On a Windows server machine, install the DHCP server role through the server manager or by running the install Windows feature DHCP, include management tools PowerShell command. Authorize the DHCP server in Active Directory. If the server is a member of an Active Directory domain, authorize the DHCP server in Active Directory. This allows the DHCP server to automatically update DNS records for clients. Configure DHCP scope options. Set additional scope options as needed, such as the lease duration, router addresses, and WIN server addresses. Enable DHCP failover. If you have multiple DHCP servers in your environment, configure DHCP failover to provide redundancy and high availability. This ensures that clients can obtain IP addresses even if one of the DHCP servers fails. Secure the DHCP server. Configure DHCP server security by restricting unauthorized access to the DHCP console and enabling DHCP packet filtering to prevent rogue DHCP servers. Monitor and manage DHCP logs. Regularly monitor DHCP server logs to identify potential issues, such as address conflicts or lease exhaustion. Use the DHCP console or PowerShell complets to manage and maintain the DHCP server. Configure DHCP reservations. For critical servers or devices that require static IP addresses, configure DHCP reservations to ensure they always receive the same IP address. Backup and restore DHCP configuration. Regularly backup the DHCP server configuration to ensure that you can restore it in case of a failure or disaster. Document the DHCP configuration. Maintain detailed documentation of the DHCP server configuration, including scope settings, reservations, and any custom options or settings. By following these best practices, you can ensure that your DHCP server is properly configured secure and manageable within your Windows domain environment. So I will not evaluate the answer until I give you the last question. So we will ask him another question and then I will tell you guys which answer I prefer in 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 I will rank them. Okay. So let's see what was his answer. Are there any products that can monitor the HCP free and commercial third party products? Let's ask him this question just a moment. Yes, there are several third-party tools, both free and commercial, that can monitor and manage DHCP servers in a Windows environment. Here are some popular options. Free tools. DHCP Console Viewer. This is a built-in Microsoft tool that allows you to view and manage DHCP scopes, leases, and servers remotely. DHCP Manager Pro a free tool from FastView that provides a centralized management console for monitoring and managing multiple DHCP servers. DHCP Probe, a free tool from herens.info that can scan for and detect DHCP servers on the network, as well as display information about scopes, leases, and options. DHCP Monitor, a free tool from SolarWinds that monitors DHCP servers and alerts you when issues arise, such as low address pool levels or rogue DHCP servers. Commercial tools. SolarWinds IPM, IP address management, a comprehensive IP address management solution that includes DHCP monitoring, management, and reporting capabilities. Manage Engine OpUtils, part of the OpUtils suite. This tool provides centralized DHCP server monitoring, management, and reporting across multiple domains and locations. Infoblocks DDI, DNS, DHCP, and IP address management, a robust solution that offers DHCP monitoring, management, and automation, along with DNS and IP address management capabilities. Sapien DHCP Monitor. 
a dedicated DHCP monitoring tool that can monitor multiple DHCP servers, track lease usage, and generate customizable reports. Efficient IP SO Allied Server, a DDI solution that includes DHCP monitoring, management, and automation features, along with DNS and IP address management capabilities. These tools can help you monitor DHCP server health, track lease usage, identify conflicts, and manage DHCP configurations from a centralized interface. Some tools also provide reporting and alerting features to help you proactively identify and resolve DHCP-related issues. When choosing a tool, consider factors such as your environment size, budget, and specific monitoring and management requirements. It's also a good idea to evaluate the tool's ease of use, scalability, and integration with your existing systems. So if I will rank the answers, the first or the best answer was from perplexity. I can see this is very, very detailed and very, very uh, rich answer. The second one would be for ChatGPT, and the last one would be for Claude. It's not that much, but it gives us some info. But anyway, we can see here that we have taken uh, or we have seen how the DHCP can be configured uh, practically and what are the best practices and how we can implement these best practices and any point in these answers for example if you see any point in ChatGPT that you need to uh, apply technically you can ask him to give you the technical steps to apply that so this is very very simple you can ask even perplexity how to do that and the same for Claude so you will have when you consider uh, Configuring the HSP, you can first uh, plan it carefully and ask the AI or, uh, or uh, get recommendations from the AI about your planning if it is correct or you need to add additional steps. So uh, I will stop at this minute in the upcoming video. This is minute 14. I, in the upcoming video, I will begin uh, an installation of the file server feature. So we will have this server to be a file server. <clears throat> we will see also how we can configure the file server feature, how we can uh, use a uh, feature like file screening and file quota or folder quota so, so we can control what uh, the type and size of data to be put on our file server. We will uh, configure uh, folders and share them on this file server and map them to the users using a group policy. All of this will be uh, discussed in the upcoming video. Hope this video is informative for you all and thank you all for viewing. Thank you so much.